Thanks everyone for coming. I'm Eric Yarnell. I'm a naturopathic physician and I specialize in men's health. I think I'm the only one. <laughs> That's not true. I have one colleague in New York and one in Arizona that I know that do this. And I have someone that works with me, Dr. Eric Nissen. But um, yeah, a lot of naturopathic doctors focus on women's health and that's great. We need lots of support for women's health, but we also need support for men's health. So that's what I do. And I'm going to talk tonight about prostate cancer, uh, talking about screening, prevention, and treatment. And this has kind of been in the news lately, so I thought it was timely and it's always an issue. So, prostate cancer. Uh, prostate cancer is interesting because, unlike most cancers, the large majority of prostate cancer is not dangerous. It doesn't kill you. You don't even know you have it. And we know this because, of, primarily because of the PSA test, which I'm going to talk a fair bit about and why I think this test is a problem. But also they've done studies where, um, they've done this both in the United States, Europe, and Japan, found all the same thing, that men who die of other causes, car accidents or heart attacks, if they then look in their prostates, they find an enormous percentage of them have cancer and it goes up with age. So by age 80, almost 75% of men have prostate cancer. You know, again, it's, it's an interesting phenomenon and that word cancer really triggers a lot of people's buttons because we've all been raised to be really afraid of it. But for this cancer, it's a, it's a really different story. So in the 1980s, late 1980s, the PSA test came out, which stands for prostate specific antigen. The fact that this molecule is found in women tells you right away that it is not specific to the prostate. <laughs> when this was introduced, it was hailed as this amazing screening test that was going to be able to detect all this prostate cancer very early. We would be able to treat patients and we would basically get rid of anyone dying of prostate cancer. For the first 10 years that the PSA was available, the death rate of prostate cancer actually went up. And we think that was actually from treatment, basically over-treating. So the main issue with the PSA test is you're detecting all these little cancers that would never hurt a fly, but you're treating these men with very aggressive treatment. It's major surgery, taking out their prostate, radiation, and hormone-depriving drugs, all of which have, can have severe, severe side effects. And in particular, the hormone deprivation treatments, more and more studies are showing that those actually shorten your lifespan compared to just going with your cancer because they cause so much heart disease. In the last, well, last year, two giant studies were published in the New England Journal of Medicine. So one of these studies was done in the United States and one was done in Europe. And basically what they did is they took gigantic populations of men, almost 100,000 in both studies. Half of them, they tested with PSA every year and half they didn't. And it was randomly decided who was going to be tested and who wasn't. In the U.S. study, there was no difference in the death rate from prostate cancer after an average of about eight years of follow-up. So the main thing the test was supposed to do, decrease prostate cancer death, it didn't do. Now the European study, they found about a 20% reduction in prostate cancer death in the group that was screened with PSA. But the total mortality was no different. So basically, you're less likely to die of prostate cancer if you're screened, but you die of other causes more. And again, we have to come back and say, maybe it was the treatment causing side effects that ultimately were lethal. So in my opinion, the PSA test is fatally flawed. It detects too many cancers that aren't a problem. It can't differentiate the scary cancers that will kill from those that won't. So at this point, I think it's almost as dangerous to get the test as it is not to get the test. Despite all the money we're spending on cancer, we've made almost no dent whatsoever in the problem because we're not treating the causes. So one of my main take home messages is the, the most important thing about prostate cancer is to prevent it, not to try to find a test that will detect it because it's too late. Even if you catch it early, what else, what other cancers have started, you know, <laughs> what else has gone wrong? So I really think cancer screening is kind of in a lot of areas, is a boondoggle. I mean, yes, it's done some good things for some cancers, but it's still 
takes the focus off of treating the cause or trying to prevent it. And luckily we know lots about how to prevent prostate cancer. And it's the great thing about it is that it, the things we do to prevent prostate cancer are the same things we do to prevent heart disease, the same things we do to prevent diabetes, the same things we do to prevent colon cancer. You know, it's eating fruits and vegetables, exercising, reducing stress. And we could get into details about that, but it's, it's really not that complicated. Prevention, prevention, prevention. And I wish that for every dollar that was spent on researching cancer, there was a dollar spent on doing things that we know prevent it, supporting things we already know. And it's just amazing the research that supports preventing cancer. Imagine what would happen 10 years from now if we shifted our focus. You know, it would become a rare disease again. I truly believe that. And we can see that in the world. If you go to rural parts of Africa, rural parts of Asia, prostate cancer is unheard of. It doesn't exist. Breast cancer doesn't exist. You know, we know that these things can be prevented. We know what causes them. So there is at least one test that's coming out as an alternative to PSA. And I'm interested in it because one of the other problems with PSA is that some non-cancer conditions routinely cause the test to be elevated and give this false sense of danger, which would be the enlarged prostate or BPH and prostatitis. Both of those do elevate the PSA in a lot of men, leading to some unnecessary biopsies and sometimes unnecessary treatment. So this new test is actually a urine test. It's called the PCA3, or Prostate Cancer Antigen 3. So one downside of this test is it does, it's not a simple blood draw. You have to come in and get a prostate exam and then collect a urine specimen after that. The benefit of this PCA3 test is that normal, can, or normal prostate cells don't make this PCA3 molecule. So BPH and prostatitis will not cause false positive results in this test. Another thing that's now looking very exciting for prevention is the vitamin D craze. Is that something people have been hearing about? Taking a pill is pretty simple for vitamin D. It's really safe. And my experience in my practice is 5,000 units of vitamin D3 a day is the minimum dose to get people actually into what I consider the normal range. Most labs therefore will say that above 30 is normal but my reading of the literature is until you get to about 60, you're still at significantly increased risk of not just prostate cancer, but breast cancer, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer. Um, but for some reason, prostate and breast are the biggest risks with low vitamin D. Since I started taking vitamin D, I've had two colds in three years, and they've both been extremely mild, for lasting like a day. It's been astonishing. And all my patients tell the same story. So again, Another take home message I want to give is a lot of the things we do to prevent prostate cancer have these other benefits. As opposed to a lot of things that are done in conventional medicine, if anything, they have additional adverse effects. You know, they're not, not only are they not helping other problems, they're making other problems. I'll briefly want to say something else about the PSA, which is that there's a right way to do the PSA and a wrong way. And I've seen that. I've had a patient who is he got a regular PSA at his primary care doctor, it was 4.8. He said, well, you should get a biopsy, you may be a prostate cancer. And he didn't want to get a biopsy, so he came to me and I said, let's just go ahead and repeat it. And by the way, even if you do it the wrong way, there's a very good study saying if you just wait for a month and retest, 30% of those numbers will be normal. With nothing else changed, no change in diet, no change in anything, you just repeat it. Lo and behold, a month later, his PSA was 3.9, below the threshold at which biopsy is recommended. I mentioned that we do know there's a risk factor for prostate cancer if there's a family member, but just having prostate cancer in your family is not the same thing as having someone who died of prostate cancer, especially if they died before the age of 60. That's really where we see the family history being an issue. So I want to be just make sure we know that we're asking the right questions about those things. Are there combinations of vitamins that are specific for prostate and whatnot? Yes and no. Um, yes, 
in terms of some of the things I mentioned, especially where there's clear research saying these definitely help prevent prostate cancer. So for me, that would be you know maybe this form of selenium, which by the way is the yeast-based selenium, um, or the Brazil nuts, vitamin, the mix to copper, all vitamin D. There's enough evidence, I think, to say it's worth doing those. But again, there's also lots of evidence saying those things help prevent all kinds of other problems. So I guess my answer would be yes and no. There is now a two-year study of basically a vegan diet for men who have prostate cancer showing that you can basically stop it in its tracks. That's for localized or the mild prostate cancer. And there is also evidence of a Mediterranean diet, which does include fish and seafood, saying that also reduces risk of prostate cancer.